I often feel I'm only really good at doing really silly things. But if anybody else did them, people would be impressed. But when it's just me doing them, that Grebner kid's just being weird in his yard again. Howdy folks, Tex Grabner here with Tex Grabner Outdoors. Hope you guys are ready for your Tex Grabner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness. Because I'm back. I never quit making videos, I just haven't posted anything. Actually, I've been making a lot of videos, or at least taking a lot of film. For all of us Toys R Us kids, we grew up in and inherited a shitty world and had to get big boy jobs. So as my life has sped up, my video production has gone down. And I'm not gonna lie, it is difficult to get motivated to actually post YouTube videos anymore. But I have not given up. Things have just slowed down. I hope that this video is gonna turn out really good for you guys and that you guys are really gonna like it. I'm also, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I'm actually looking forward to Illinois archery season 2023. Still traditional bow hunting, but also I did order an Oneida Phoenix for the later seasons to half-ass traditional style hunt with a lever bow compound. It's up to you whether that still counts. I've got some arrow builds that I've been filming as I've been getting stuff figured out with that. And obviously other arrow builds for more traditional archery equipment. The topic of this video is my adventures down here in the conservation areas of the Illinois River on the backwaters and on the drainage ditch canals of essentially spear hunting fish. Now I have actually become quite successful with a fish spear to be completely honest. Like it's always an adventure down here even though it doesn't really seem like it's that remote. And I still love bow fishing. And I really hope that you guys are gonna enjoy this week's episode of Tex Grebner Outdoors. Remember, as long as I have an account to post with, I will still make videos. You are still gonna see videos. And maybe this year will be the year that I break the whitetail curse. Now, if you guys are looking for a discount on all your Trad Life supplies, use the code Tex Grebner in your checkout at Three Rivers Archery. That will give you a free shipping discount on orders over $100. With that being said, Three Rivers does have their own discount code, but using my code actually shows your support for what I'm doing and helps encourage them, and getting the numbers on that also helps encourage me. If you're in the market for some high-end hunting ammunition between 30-06 all the way up to 505 Gibbs, or you want to take a 12-gauge and make it be able to kill a rhino, Check out my friends over at Aria Ballistic Engineering. They're in stock and shipping around the clock. And you might want to get a hold of some high quality hunting ammunition before the hunting season rush. If you're looking to armor the front of your arrow, look into my friends over at ethicsarchery.com. Use the code TGO10 in your order and it will give you a 10% discount on your total purchase price. And I can honestly say, while I did have that day six broadhead fail, I have never messed up an ethics on an animal that I have shot into. Now, I hope that you guys are going to enjoy this week's episode of Tex Grebner Outdoors because it's been pretty adventurous of a summer, even if real life has gotten in the way quite a bit. Not going to lie, every time I'm working on fences, especially electric fences, I can't help but think about Jurassic Park and Ian Malcolm and chaos theory. Not to be anybody's shill, because I'm not actually sure if Tim Wells even likes me or not, but over the past couple of years, I've been using the Tim Wells fish spear, and I pretty much like it so far as a user-friendly entry-level product that you just buy, tie off on, and use. <clears throat> First carp of the season. For those of you that have never worked with fence, I trust barbed wire more than I trust electric wire, or as we sometimes call it, hot wire. Because hot wire, if it's a real humid day, the water in the air can short it out sometimes. Or if you've got grass laying on it, even with a weed burner fence or fescue if it grows up, 
will short out an electric fence. So you've really got to keep your fences weed eated under. But then again, if a tree falls on a barbed wire fence, the cows are still going to walk across it. The only thing that keeps an animal in, unless it's like a high security enclosure, is it simply not wanting to get out. So ethical animal husbandry is also really important. Then again, if you've got a weak post, you might as well just put in a steel post beside it because if an animal can get out, it will get out. Now it may come as a surprise to some of you to see me bow fishing with a compound, but I figure I have an $800 Martin Xenon from years ago that was just collecting dust in the garage. So why not put the bow fishing reel on it from AMS and just go out and use it? Now, oddly enough, people always tell you when you're bow fishing that you need to aim lower than you think the fish is. And that's true on a boat. But from the bank, honest to God, you darn near have to aim right at him because bow fishing arrows are pretty much going to be about 1100 grains. Now even if you're using like a 70 pound draw compound, there's still going to be a considerable arrow drop by the time your arrow actually gets to the fish. So it helps to actually aim at the fish when you're actually bank stalking rather than going about things the way that you normally hear of aim lower than you think the fish is. You don't necessarily have to aim lower than the fish is in your vision when you're going from the bank because you have to also compensate for the arrow drop, which adds another degree of adventure, I guess we'll call it, to bow fishing from the bank without a boat. Now, if they are super close, obviously, then you're gonna end up aiming below the fish. But if you're going from the bank, you wanna aim right at the fish, or maybe if it's a super long shot, you're gonna have to hold over. I grew up with two grandpas, both of them persnickety about how the barnyards were kept. Also, I had one of my first jobs was weed eating graveyards. And I do a lot of weed eating around my current job and I do a lot of weed eating around the family farm. As I mentioned, keeping the fences weed eated underneath so that the triceratops don't get out. So steel posts eat weed eater string. Also, <laughs> gravestones eat weed eater string. And so I have gotten very efficient at reloading a steel weed eater head in just under a minute. So this is the first ever TGO Weed Eater Rodeo. As you see, my hands come off like a calf roper finishing a tie. Spear fishing from the bank and bow fishing from the bank have their own challenges. The sun, the heat, which I'm fine with in most cases because I hate winter with a passion because I'm always working in the winter outside. There's also water clarity issues, the distance issues, the reflection and refraction. Between distance and water clarity, that's why I say that you normally will want to aim or throw right at where you see the fish because the laws of randomness will probably guide you to a hit if you put your arrow or your spear where it needs to be, but also because of the distance and the water clarity, if you can actually see the fish, that means that it's probably not deep enough that you would have to actually hold under it. In most cases, if you aim where you think the fish is and you throw or shoot there, the arrow drop will compensate for the depth of the fish by the time that your arrow gets there and drop you right into the fish. Now when it comes to the spear, the best line solution that I have found that isn't going to be too heavy and drag your spear down and isn't going to be so light that it either will break or it will tear your hands up if you have to put some pressure on it is using 550 cord 
measured out to length and then pull the guts out of it. One of the complications of dealing with large, large quantities of grain is when you start pulling out of the bottom conveyors, you have grain dust that will become these giant compressed balls that look like miniature asteroids, but are giant boulders of corn dust, sometimes bean dust. And you will have to take off an inspection door, put a rod up through the inspection door, always keeping yourself outside the conveyor, and poke it apart which is very nerve-wracking in spite of it essentially being very safe. But if you have the rod when the grain lets go be grabbed by the conveyor, just let the rod go. Do not get pulled into the conveyor. Now this is an OSHA approved way of doing this, but it is still filthy and nerve-wracking. I guess you could call this a trick shot. It's definitely a first for me because I managed to line up both a gar and a carp in the same shot. Now truthfully, I also felt a little bit guilty about that because especially in bow hunting, we're always talking about be aware of our target, what is beyond it, and what our pass through might hit. But let's just call it a trick shot. I mean, these are rough fish. Context is everything. Another thing that I think is tragically funny is if you go down south and you bow fish for alligator gar or put a spear through one, everybody's impressed by this four foot to maybe six foot or even giant alligator gar. But if you're down on the backwater and you put a spear through, say, a 12 inch to 30 inch just regular old gar, those are really hard to hit, but ain't nobody impressed by it. Now I mentioned the center core of the grain bin. You saw me poking it from the bottom. I managed to get enough out of this giant grain bin, but now in order to be able to uncover the sweep auger and get it on the center pin, I'm having to go in with a pickaxe and break up the grain bin's core that I was unable to poke apart that's currently sitting on the center hole and blocking more grain from coming down on the other side. This should never be done with the conveyor energized and it shouldn't be done if the side slopes are still steep enough to cause grain engulfment. It is still nerve wracking though when you hear grain start to slide around you but I was able to pickaxe the grain core apart. If you ever needed to know how to herd chickens, Get yourself a sorting pole with a flag on it. It'll send them right into where they think they're safe. There's the flag. Makes them think there's a hawk out in the barnyard swooping down. And they go right where they're supposed to be. What can be really frustrating is if you get a really big fish on the end of your spear and it takes off with all its swimming strength and tears the spear up. I've never had this happen with gar and it doesn't happen often with carp, but soft fleshed fish like carp, sometimes it happens and it's really frustrating when it does. But generally speaking, I haven't had the Tim Wells fish spear tear out of too many fish, but I did get a headshot. And we're back to repairing fences. I also got really, really brave. In spite of what you guys might think, I'm very cautious with my equipment. 
if it's electronic. And so I say I got really, really brave because I started using a GoPro session as a spear cam. Now I never really trusted the waterproofness before until this year. However, it felt like a little bit of an exercise in futility because the water clarity made it almost pointless. But I figured that I'd leave these clips in here because you guys might like the spear cam film. Now if the water clarity was better and it wasn't necessarily the Illinois River backwater, you would definitely be able to see better spear cam footage than what I'm actually getting you. But this one's pretty good. I do a lot of what's called maladaptive daydreaming, which is where you take your normal life and through your imagination as an escape mechanism, you kind of spice it up. For instance, a lot of the time when I'm down here, I'm always thinking, well, I sure am glad that I don't live where alligators and crocodiles live or anacondas because this would be a much more exhilarating experience. These things are fun to fantasize about in a masculine or maybe if you're so inclined a feminine way. It's more popular with the masculine way. But I also find myself thinking that <laughs> if I'm in the water, as I sometimes do when the water levels are up, but I've got bloody legs from getting cut up by the multiflor rose, and I'm paying attention to where the fish is coming in at. And where I'm not paying attention, I'm balls deep in water, and a bull shark that swam up the Mississippi River into the Illinois River and back into this drainage canal comes up and nails me on the calf or in the side of the quad. I'm going to spear him through the gills. He's going to die. I will get a good death like the end of Legends of the Fall. But then again, I'm basically hiked a mile back from the truck beyond the gate, and so I'm probably going to watch that shark sink like at the very end of Jaws in the book while I'm bleeding out on the bank. So I do do a lot of maladaptive daydreaming. And while I love the idea of doing this where there are dangerous creatures, these are things that we fantasize about. I would absolutely love to save up enough money to take an alligator hunt and use the spear. And I'm hoping to eventually. Now this location isn't very remote. It's not tropical. The fish that I'm getting aren't all that impressive. But it's kind of a backyard adventure. From a schoolboy standpoint, I'm living the dream with my dangerous insurgency of an inner child, for lack of better words. Adventure can be where you find it. And primitive fishing like this, even though I am using a steel spear, is something that I'm really passionate about. And I hope you've enjoyed this summer video for 2023. I tend to work with my spears a lot more than I do with my archery sometimes during the summer, just to make sure that I stay sharp in case I'm able to get down to Oklahoma with Tripper for a hog hunt. But it also definitely helps with the fish spearing. Now, 17 yards is pretty much my max. The funny part is, Nobody's really impressed by me being able to break clay pigeons at like 15 to 17 yards. <sighs> That's funny because realistically the animals that I would actually be throwing at at that distance, limiting myself to a clay pigeon target, is essentially going to have the vital size of like a basketball. As I'm filming this, it's a hot day in mid-August, and 
before you know it, it'll be time for the harvest to come in and time to start freezing our bowls, do a deer stand. So while I'm excited about Illinois archery season 2023, because hunting is a visceral mystery, Wiley Coyote might be my spirit animal. He gets beat up, but he never gives up. Well, I'm excited about breaking the whitetail curse, possibly. I am not looking forward to the possibilities of freezing my bowls to a tree stand platform. I mean, granted, it's squirrel season right now, but here I am thinking about spear fishing. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's adventure, and I hope that you'll stick with me as I try and live in real life and still live the dream, even if sometimes it is kind of a nightmare. As always, God bless all my sports center of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please got my friends over at ThreeRiversArchery.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. And thanks for watching. Thanks for grabbing your outdoors.